Hi, I'm Ryan Szymanski, curator for Battleship New Jersey Museum and Memorial. And today, we've got a picture's worth a thousand words on the inside of the ship. In today's episode, we've got two pictures of the ship's captain's cabin as it appeared in World War II. We recently found evidence of what the captain's cabin, how it would have been configured in the 1980s. The space has been set up kind of loosely uh, based on what furniture we had in here as a museum, but it seems like in the real early days of the museum, there was something of a furniture land grab as initial spaces were being opened up, and some of the original stuff from in here was removed. And uh, we, we recently found some evidence that helped us determine what the configuration of the furniture in this room would have been. Believe it or not, with all the ceremonies that would have been done in here, all the important people that would have been here, uh, we could not find a single picture in our collection of this space, the captain's in-port cabin, in the 1980s. Uh, so we're going from some other archaeological evidence, where there are mounting points in the deck. What do our sister ships look like? Um, what do the blueprints look like? The blueprints don't necessarily show us where things are, but they give us a rough outline. And uh, between all of this evidence, we were able to reconfigure the space, find some matching furniture that uh, didn't seem right where it was, and otherwise reinterpret it. Now, while we were doing that, we found some pictures of this space in World War II, which is completely different, um, and yet it looks relatively similar to the layout in the space from some pictures we've seen of the Vietnam era. So it looks like the ship doesn't have many changes in this room until the very, very end of the ship's career uh, in the 1980s. So uh, first up, we have a picture, and uh, this one dates itself. It is one of the most identifiable pictures ever. So, boom. We're looking at the picture. Top right corner, you can see a little box with some letters and numbers in it. A-103-L. That's the World War II era uh, bullseye, essentially, the compartment number, using the old World War II numbering style that tells you exactly what room this is. So even though there's admiral's quarters and, and other spaces like that on the ship, this picture is taking place in the captain's in-port cabin because it's got that tag A103L very clearly showing up in the picture. Also in this picture that helps us date it, uh, you can see the gentleman in the background center. Well, that's clearly Admiral William Halsey. So we know that this is one of the periods in uh, 1944 early 1945 that he is on board the ship. But even better for dating the picture, the gentleman on the right that the picture is more or less centered on, well, that's clearly Admiral Chester Nimitz. So we know that Nimitz comes on board on uh, December 24th, 1944. And that's what we're looking at here. That was the first time that he broke his five-star pennant over a ship ever. His first time after being promoted that he got to step on a ship. And if you zoom in on his collar there, you'll see instead of four stars in a line, he's got five stars in a little pentagon there on his collar. So this not only firmly locates this space and dates it, it tells us exactly where uh, Admiral Nimitz was on that day and where this picture was taken and when. So, uh, we've, we've previously seen pictures of Admiral Nimitz on board right outside the captain's cabin on the open deck. So, it seems like rather than going up the ladder to the Admiral's uh, conference room, one level above us, they chose instead to come right into this space here, the captain's cabin. Now, uh, this picture is pretty zoomed in. Uh, more or less, you see the door there is this door over here in the corner. So, whereas we're more on the starboard, the outboard side of the ship, that is more towards the center line over there. Uh, but it doesn't really give us a great view of uh, the space. So, we have this other picture here, which shows us uh, more or less what the space looked like as built. If I had to guess, uh, 
this high resolution picture um, is probably a builder's photo. It doesn't seem like they would have taken a, a big high resolution photo like this uh, with no people in it unless it was a builder's photo. It, it just doesn't make sense. The builder's photos tend to be taken uh, after the ship is completed, when it's fully loaded, but usually just before the ship is placed into commission. Uh, so that would explain why the space is clearly lived in and whatnot. And it, it, they tend to document every single space on the ship. And I've never seen any for Iowa class battleships. There should be a whole collection of them. Uh, and in theory, those pictures would have been taken by the New York Navy Yard, the, the ones who led the design process. So I'm not entirely sure if that's the case. However, that's what it looks like. If you look at the uh, right-hand column there, or excuse me, the right-hand side of the frame, you can see the ghost of half of a person. This was a fairly long exposure, uh, high-resolution picture. You are in this picture standing in the forward center line corner of the space over there with the camera coming back in this direction. You can see that serving counter over there. And then you can see right by the door here where we currently have the christening bottle, they had a safe. That's an old World War II style safe. So at some point, that safe gets removed and the current safe that we have in the corner where this picture is being taken from was installed. Interestingly, seems like all four Iowas when they were modernized in the 80s had that safe placed somewhere differently. Mazora's is over in the captain's cabin, the, the other ships, it's all over the place. Uh, let's see. You can see that here where the cabinet with the silver is, is uh, another serving table. I suspect that this cabinet was moved from basically where the picture's being taken, which was turned into an air conditioner in the 1980s. And I, I bet you they pulled the cabinet away from there and put it over here when they installed that air conditioner. And you can also see the captain's table. And the captain's table is not only a little bit smaller than the one we have now, although it does have leafs in it that can be removed or added, it's oriented in a different direction. Uh, which has always interested me, the base to the captain's table here is normally oriented in the same direction that the table runs, but in our captain's cabin, it's oriented um, perpendicular to how the table runs with its long side going towards the short side of the table. That said, it seems to be a little bit too far towards the center line to how it's appearing in this picture. Uh, so it does seem like they moved the table. So it's interesting that that base stays in the wrong place. Um, here's an interesting one for you. If you look at the table, there are a pair of ashtrays on it. Smoking indoors, obviously very big thing. Uh, and if you look back at that picture of Halsey and uh, Nimitz, both of them have cigarettes in their hands. Oh, here's another interesting thing for you. Uh, you can see that there are six tanker chairs around the table, two with arms, two, uh, four without arms. Nimitz wasn't sitting in one of those chairs, though. They pulled up the, uh, the big Navy recliner that's over by the desk in this picture. It would be roughly here where this sign is. Uh, and they pulled that up to the head of the table for Nimitz to sit in. It's interesting that there's the, uh, the big fan in here. You can also see some ventilating ducts in the overhead. There would not be air conditioning in this space, but uh, clearly they're trying to get some air moving. The ship is designed to operate in the South Pacific. Um, interesting, you've got an old World War II style radio mounted roughly right there on the bulkhead. Um, it would be on this side, inboard of the frame, above the desk, and there's a fan there too. So lots of fans for moving air in this space. I've read a report that said that the Iowa class battleships did not have their doors installed, their joiner doors, the non-watertight doors uh, during World War II because they were trying to rush them out quickly. And in place of that, they hung curtains. 
on the captain's cabin, we have curtains, but we also have doors that are painted in the wood pattern that dates to uh, World War II. And in this picture, you can clearly see that door is there, as is that curtain. So it's interesting. Maybe they did install the doors in flagged spaces like captains and admirals, and it was just like officer's country where they didn't get joiner doors. Really interesting feature here for me is the light fixtures. I am not familiar with that type of light fixture on a ship. Uh, all of the ships I have worked on, however, have been heavily modified post-World War II, and they tend to have uh, this style of fluorescent fixture rather than the older World War II style. In World War II, I'm used to seeing like regular incandescent bulbs screwed into fixtures, but this is, looks like some sort of fluorescent fixture, but very different from what the ship now has. You're looking at that overhead, it is much uh, emptier than what we have now. There's been a lot more electrical cables run over the course of the ship's career. There's been a lot more air conditioning duct work run when they installed the uh, air conditioner over there in the corner. And the final interesting feature is the couch that would have sat roughly here where the, the TV is. Uh, it's interesting that that is removed and the space has more of a seating area installed with multiple couches and recliners instead of just a single three-person couch and a single recliner. The desk, of course, gets rotated from being against that wall outboard to now being against this bulkhead here. And it looks like they did that so they could put a shelf over it. Uh, and I do believe that is the original desk. It does look like they just cut it off the deck and rotated it over. Next time we change the carpet out in this space, which we usually have to do every five or 10 years uh, because people walking through wear up the old carpet, um, we'll, we'll take a look at what sort of archeology span we can do on the deck to see where things are mounted now, where things are loose, and where things would have been mounted during uh, previous commissions. And that might help us with some archeology. span I wanna say it's been about two years since we replaced the carpet in here and it's in relatively good shape. So I'll have to keep working at this museum for a few years to learn those answers. All right, and the last thing I wanna point out, uh, you can see some metal fitting some bowls or something on the counter, which would have been in this space, roughly, where the silver set is now. And those do look like silver. It looks like a picture frame holder maybe, and a pair of bowls and a, and a pitcher. Those are not uh, part of the ship's actual silver. While the ship did have the ship's silver made for it by World War II, uh, we do not believe that the ship carried it at that time. Typically, ships offloaded things like their silver and their bell, the, the big fancy things, even their builder's plaques, uh, and that would have helped save weight as you're adding more electronics and more anti-aircraft and guns and more crew onto these ships, and it would have also uh, saved those more precious metal objects from being destroyed if the ship is damaged or lost. There's no room for something like that on a fighting ship. The reason we carry it to entertain foreign dignitaries, we're not doing much of that in a war zone. So I suspect this is more like uh, the wardroom silverware or uh, something like that as opposed to the actual ship silver, which you can see over here is very well engraved where these look uh, far smoother to me. So, what's something you noticed in these pictures I didn't point out? Let us know in the comment section down below. It's interesting, uh, we have very few pictures of the inside of the ship compared to the number we have taken of the outside of the ship. So, uh, I think this is our first pictures worth a thousand words where we've actually looked at a space inside let us know in the comments section down below if you like that, if you've got some other pictures like this you'd like to see, or if you just wanna see us do more pictures of the guns firing, which easily single most photographed thing on the ship. Uh, remember, 
There's a link in the description below to my Facebook page. It's much easier to send me the picture you want us to do on there as opposed to here on YouTube. Uh, so feel free to send me suggestions for futures pictures worth a thousand words. Otherwise, Battleship New Jersey receives operating support from the New Jersey Department of State. Also, a number of other businesses and private individuals like yourselves. We really appreciate your support. There's a link in the description below if you'd like to continue donating to support the museum and our channel. Thanks for watching.